For 30 years, Kecksburg, Pennsylvania has been a town divided by a bizarre controversy. Many of its citizens claiming that nothing out of the ordinary has ever happened there. While other residents claim that in December 1965, this Westmoreland County village was briefly the home of a crashed UFO. What is the truth about this strange metal object that witnesses say crashed in the woods near Kecksburg? And why do some of them say the local people were ordered to keep quiet about what happened? Was it because they'd stumbled across some top secret government project? Or because they'd seen an object that proved the existence of intelligent life on other planets? To learn the truth, we must return to that December afternoon in 1965. It was approximately 4.47 p.m. when the object impacted in the woods at Kecksburg. There are a number of local residents around Kecksburg who saw the object get down into the wooded area. While none of these people reported any type of sound of impact, almost momentarily there was a column of blue smoke that rose up out of the woods. According to the eyewitness accounts, Kecksburg residents soon rushed to the spot where they now saw smoke rising through the trees. There, they say, they discovered a metallic object partially buried at the bottom of a ravine, still smoking from its long descent through the Earth's atmosphere. Kecksburg resident Jim Romansky says he was one of the first to locate the object at the bottom of a densely wooded ravine. Here was this large metal object in front of me. Um, I've described it as a large acorn. And the reason I say the acorn is because around the bottom of this object, there was a bumper that went the whole way around this thing. It was dented, and it had a very distinct color. I mean, this thing was a, a, a bronze, copper, steel. It was a color that it's, it's very hard even to describe. Then, according to Romansky and many other witnesses, armed US soldiers arrived with trucks and other heavy equipment. You know, the military started coming in. We were under martial law. Jeeps, trucks everywhere. Down through the woods come two guys. Trench coats, crew cut hair, straight as ramrod. He looked around, he looked at the object, he looked at us in a very authoritative voice. Told us that this area is now quarantined, it's restricted, to get out. According to Romansky and many other witnesses interviewed by Stan Gordon, the object only remained in the ravine for a few hours because the soldiers who had so quickly arrived on the scene then recovered the object and took it somewhere else. Here comes this big flatbed truck, tractor trailer, okay, two piece job. And on the back of it, it either had a, either a, a tow motor, that's one of those things you lift things with, were front loaded. The back of this flatbed, they had this big tarp on it, and it was stretched down around this object. And it had the same outline. In fact, I know I could see the bumper under this tarp, because you could see the shape of this thing. The tarp was pulled so tight that you could see the shape. And I knew in my mind, that was what they brought down off that mountain, the object. Military truck with a flatbed trailer with the object on it departed late that evening from Kecksburg. And from information we now have, the truck continued on and it went to Lockbourne Air Force Base in Columbus, Ohio, where it stayed over for a short period of time. From there, it went over to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. It seems very likely that our government had tracked the object and they had notified the quick response recovery teams that are involved in this type of operation. But since the object was apparently taken away, never to be seen again, it might seem that as far as the residents of Kecksburg were concerned, the incident was over. But according to a number of the eyewitnesses, the most terrifying aspect of their encounter with a UFO had really only just begun. John Murphy, who was the news director of WHJB, felt that the story concerning the object at Kecksburg was of great importance. So he did a lot of investigation on the case and interviewed a number of witnesses who had been involved or had knowledge about the incident. What exactly did you see? Well, I saw there was an object falling and it was burning. Is that exactly what you saw? Yeah. It was in the shape of an acorn. It was falling from the sky on fire. 
and it came down very smoothly and then landed in the woods. And it had some sort of writing, writing of some yeah. sort. We couldn't figure out what it was saying. Writing. Are you sure it wasn't like uh, Japanese writing or something? No. Or Chinese. Nothing I've no. ever seen. Nothing. Very different. Are you sure this is? Uh, you're you're saying it's a spaceship now, not anything that. Yeah. Absolutely. It was very, absolutely. It was very bright. Absolutely. So what is the situation here on the? home front around here with all the soldiers. And we, don't, we don't know what's happening, so it's very frightening, very frightening. According to the witness account, something seems to have badly frightened a good many of those who had seen the unidentified flying object and who had witnessed its recovery by the military. This is John Murphy. We're going to cut for a quick commercial break. Hello, this is John. Hi, John. Hey, Sally, how are you doing? That was a great interview yesterday. You and your son did a good job. All right, you can't air that. Why? Because I made a big mistake. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, it's just not, it's not the right story. What? Well, people make mistakes and I was wrong. Thanks a lot. Bye. It seems as though something must have occurred between the time of the interview with John Murphy and the time that the radio special was to be aired because of the fact that these people were willing to be interviewed and then suddenly they decided they didn't want their name or any information aired with this report. Why? What happened to cause the witnesses to refuse to make their testimony public after they'd been so willing only hours before? I think these people knew that something had come down. And the military presence was so strong that night that a lot of people who they, the military, knew seen something or lived real close to it was either told to be quiet or were bought out or something. You guys listen up. What you saw down in that field, it was nothing. Erase it from your memory, OK? Don't tell your mom. Don't tell your dad. Don't tell anyone. You got it? The government does have an official policy on UFOs. They are not vehicles from any other planet. But they do know that some UFO sightings actually are piloted by alien life forms. What are you doing? No, what are you legal. doing? This is our town. So one likely explanation for the behavior of the military at Kecksburg is that they knew they were dealing with a spaceship. But is there any way to prove that the object in the woods really was something not made by human hands? More remarkable clues to the true nature of the Kecksburg object when UFO Diaries returns. How can we learn the real truth about what landed in Kecksburg in December 1965? Is it possible that we are in fact on a wild goose chase pursuing the truth about an event that never really happened? Many local residents agree that something fell to earth at Kecksburg, but some claim that government soldiers did not hurry to the scene or retrieve an object from the woods. There has been uh, some debate over the authenticity of the event at Kecksburg, that nothing fell at all in the woods that day, that what was seen was only a meteor. But Jim Romansky says he has maintained for 30 years that the meteor story was the one given to some Kecksburg locals by the military. Someone said, hey, what the hell was that up there anyhow? And the guy hollered back, oh, they, it was a meteorite. And I looked at one guy, and we both bust out laughing. We knew there was no meteorite. Along with orders to stand by that explanation. You understand what he's saying? Good. I hope you do. Because if you don't listen, I'll kill you. With a 30-year-old debate dividing those who were in Kecksburg at the time, is there any way for us to really know the truth about the object that landed in 1965? After all, we don't have the object to examine. But is it possible for us to learn the truth by eliminating the explanations that simply do not fit the facts? As a researcher of this case and other type of UFO phenomena, it's always our position to try to find a logical explanation for what people see. I think, first of all, we can rule out the fact that the incident in Kecksburg is a hoax. Something did occur there that night that created a lot of activity. And the fact that the military apparently responded in the way they did indicated the fact that this was something that was important to our government and military. 
The bright fireball object was reported first in Canada, then over a number of states, including Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. So a lot of people did indeed see something. But does the sighting of a falling, flaming UFO prove that it was some kind of manufactured object? Or might it not simply have just been a meteor? Meteors are pieces of rock and other debris that burn up by friction in the Earth's atmosphere and normally moving at a very high rate of speed, thousands of miles per hour. It seems that whatever the object was here, it made several different turns, unlike that of a meteor, which would normally move on a straight path. Those people who observed the object before it impacted indicate the fact that this object was moving very, very slow, almost gliding in, and indicated the fact that even some of the flames around the object could easily be seen individually. A flaming object that made a controlled landing, a metallic shape without joints or seams, strange markings unlike anything on Earth, the rapid military deployment. If all these clues are based on fact, do they indeed add up to describe a vehicle from another world? There are a number of witnesses from around the Kecksburg area that indicate the fact that the military began to arrive in the area probably within about a couple of hours after the impact. The military apparently did not all arrive at the same time, but they periodically began to come into the area, indicating that they may have arrived from different locations. It's highly unlikely that military personnel would quickly respond to report of a meteorite. This is something that would commonly be done by civilian scientists. But according to Jim Romansky, the military not only arrived quickly, but immediately took over a central building for their own purposes. And as we approached the fire hall, I mean, man, you'd have thought there was an invasion going on. I mean, there were jeeps and cars and trucks parked all over the place, all military, okay? And there were uniforms everywhere. And as we tried to approach the door to go back into the fire hall, there were two armed sentries or guards, whatever you want to call them, standing there. And they refused us to go in that fire hall. In fact, one of our guys asked to go in to go to the bathroom. And they said, uh-uh, you see the weeds over there? Go. It reminded me of some of the war pictures I've seen where these people, military people, come in and declare martial law. There are numerous documents that indicate the fact that the United States government has had in place for many years a system for handling the recovery of space objects that safely re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. It is very likely that the specialized recovery teams would only have responded if there was something of great importance to the military. This would have been most likely one some type of foreign space device that had landed on our territory and they would like to have studied, or two, that this may have been something more unusual, such as the possibility of an extraterrestrial spacecraft. What is the official U.S. military answer to all of this? Do they say that the object recovered at Kecksburg is some top-secret spy satellite that accidentally dropped out of orbit? Or do they admit the possibility that it might be something not of this Earth? Stan Gordon tells of his quest for the answer to that question from the files of the Air Force's 662nd Radar Squadron. There are indeed records that indicate the fact that there are specially trained intelligence team military personnel that are on call to quickly respond to crashes of space objects that survive re-entry of the Earth's atmosphere. The 662nd Radar Squadron was assigned as a NORAD surveillance site, and Air Force documents verify the fact that at least a few personnel of that squadron were directly involved in the investigation at Kecksburg that night. However, when we look at the historical records for December of that squadron, there's no entry whatsoever of any activity on that day. That leads us to believe that this mission was classified and the paperwork went up the ladder somewhere else. The question is, why after so many years is our government still not telling us all the facts it knows about the Kecksburg incident? What is so secret about what they found at that location that even today they refuse to comment about the incident? It is not disputed that the military gathered up and hauled something away. But what was it? The mystery would take on a new and more surprising twist when reports of a secret Russian satellite suddenly began to surface. Could the episode at Kecksburg be fallout from a failed Russian space launch? More astonishing developments in the mystery of the Kecksburg incident when UFO Diaries returns. There seem to be only two viable explanations for the object that crashed at Kecksburg. Either it was part of a top secret American or Soviet satellite project, or it was some sort of vehicle from another world. 
Remember that by 1965, both the United States and the Soviet Union had the capability of putting nuclear weapons in orbit, and each was desperate to learn about the technology of the other. These rockets had segments that were jettisoned in flight and that fell back toward the Earth, presumably to burn up on re-entry. This practice has continued to the present day, and we now know that sometimes large parts of these space vehicles do not burn up entirely. Occasionally, a rather large fragment will actually reach the ground intact. There has been a treaty on the books for many years that if something of foreign origin would fall on our soil, we would recover it and give it back to the launching country. Remember that the American military would have been very interested in recovering a Soviet probe such as Cosmos 96. It would have told a great deal about Russian technology at that time. Particularly, if there was any reason to believe that the object was part of a Soviet weapon system equipped with nuclear missiles. But it may be now that after so many years, and the fact that both governments now are on a much more cordial level, the fact that they would rather just overlook the incident and forget about what happened so many years ago. Could the Kecksburg object have been a Soviet missile system, even a nuclear weapon, that accidentally fell to Earth? Weapon-bearing satellite systems are not designed to make soft landings. If indeed the object that came down in Kecksburg that day was a part of such a weapon system, it first of all would not have made a soft landing, and secondly, most likely there would have been massive destruction in that area. Cosmos 96 was launched on November 23, 1965, but its booster failed. On the same morning of the Kecksburg incident, and that occurred in Canada. There are indeed some similarities to the shape of the two objects in question. Uh, there was a tiny bit of resemblance, but that's where it stopped. Was the Kecksburg UFO a failed Soviet Venus probe? If so, does this also explain the strange hieroglyphic seen on the object by more than one witness? I mean, it was like circles and stars and dashes and all kind of markings on it. Writing, you sure it wasn't like uh, Japanese writing or something? No, no. Chinese. Nothing I've ever seen. Nothing. Very the different. external markings or identification markings that we have seen on many of the Soviet probes at the time would look very unusual to people who are not familiar with the Russian language or their type of lettering. And in fact, if the object had re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, there could have been some scarring and burning, and they could have looked somewhat distorted from the re-entry. My dad is originally, originally uh, from Kiev, and I went to him one time and I said, Dad, I says, you could read and write. Polish and Russian. He says, yeah. I said, write me something in both dialects. He says, what? I said, just write me anything. The Polish and Russian writing that I see doesn't come nowhere near. And yet the simple fact that Cosmos 96 did fall to Earth on the very same day as the Kecksburg incident is still sufficient evidence for many people to believe that they were one and the same. Then again, according to Stan Gordon, Perhaps we shouldn't make up our minds just yet. We have to look at the possibility that one, that the object in question may have been man-made, possibly Soviet in origin. I mean, the Venus probe, you had seams, you had pieces sticking out, you know, it was that quick that I could look at the picture and say, uh-uh, it wasn't it. Because I've been a machinist for almost 30 years now. And I've cut a lot of metal. And I've never run into it again, never. Surprising new evidence that may show where the Kecksburg object came from. This could have been an extraterrestrial spacecraft. When UFO Diaries returns. The object that crashed in the woods at Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, has been the source of controversy and speculation for three decades. But are we at last approaching an explanation? There do seem to be many reasons to believe that the fallen Russian space probe, Cosmos 96, was the object seen by so many on that December day in 1965. Particularly since we know that Cosmos 96 did crash on Earth on that day. But we must still consider several other important facts about Cosmos 96. The Cosmos uh, Venus probe may have been a lot smaller than what people described at the site of Kecksburg that day. This appeared to be a one-piece structured object. They didn't see any rivets or bolts or seams on it. And in fact, they mentioned no type of external apparatus for sensing different types of information, which is very apparent on many of the Soviet space probes. 
Documents from both the U.S. Space Command and the Naval Surveillance Center verify the fact that Cosmos 96 did re-enter the Earth's atmosphere at about 3.18 in the morning in Canada. And yet, without the object itself, there can be no final proof. Is it possible that it still might be held in some military storage facility? And if so, where? We've already learned of one attempt to trace the object's recovery and how that search led to a dead end. The Russian embassy indicated the fact that they had no knowledge that Cosmos 96 or any other Soviet device had crashed in Pennsylvania on December 9th, 1965. Information obtained from the United States government indicates the fact that we had no re-entry of any American space debris or any type of weapon systems that could account for the crash at Kecksburg on that day. The official document obtained from the U.S. Air Force's Project Blue Book, which was their UFO investigation program, stated that the object which was involved with the Kecksburg incident was a meteor that had been observed over a large area. All I can say about that is the people that are saying this are lying. When we look at all the explanations for what we have concerning the Kecksburg incident, I believe we can roll out a hoax, we can roll out the incident involving an airplane crash, so we have to look at what possibilities still exist. Oh, I think it was a UFO. And our most likely explanations would be that we're dealing with either a man-made space probe. Like nothing we've ever seen in this world. Uh, so you're Very saying different. definitely this is an alien ship. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. From some place other than here. If we can eliminate those possibilities, then we have to deal with the fact that we might be dealing with an actual extraterrestrial spacecraft. Investigation to the incident at Kecksburg continues. And until we have more information, this is only speculation as to what the object might really be. Something did indeed fall from the sky that day in December of 1965 into the Kecksburg woods. The military responded very quickly, located the object and recovered it and took it away from the site. <laughs>